Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a double stroke text effect in Illustrator. In fact, we're going to build it up to way more than double stroke, but if you want a double stroke, then we're going to cover that first. I'm going to use the font Angelina and I'm going to increase my font size to about 400 points. You want to match your font size to the document size that you're working on. I'm going to give you a download link to the font Angelina so that you can download it because it's a really nice font. Now the word that I'm using is Meiraki. It's a Greek word and it means throw your heart and soul into something. And I think that's a really nice word to use for this effect because it's got a fair bit of heart and soul in it. Now with our text selected, I'm going to the appearance panel. We're going to be using that throughout. There's one thing rather interesting about the appearance panel right now is that this type has a fill and no stroke, but in the appearance panel, we're not seeing either of those. There's just type characters and nothing. Well, the fill is in the characters area. So I'm going to open up the characters area and we're actually going to turn that off because we don't need or want that. And it's sort of getting, getting in our way a little bit. So with it turned off, we're going back to type where it says no appearance. And the type is selected, but we don't have any appearance. There's no fill and no stroke. So we're going to add a new fill. At this point, I'm going to click here on add new fill. And I'm going to select a fill from a small palette of colors I'm going to be working in, which is a sort of creamy yellow. So now we have a fill on our type, much easier to see what's going on. We also have access to a stroke and I want to add a sort of red stroke to the text. I want it to be nice and thick. So I click here in the stroke weight, hold the shift key, press the up arrow key, make it nice and thick and disaster just struck. Disaster struck in a couple of ways. Firstly, there's all sorts of pointy bits happening here. And secondly, my stroke just ate my text. So First problem first, let's get rid of these pointy bits. And that's got to do with the corners, the beveled corners or whatever we're using right now. Right now we're using a mitre join. There is a round join that solved the problem and there's also a bevel join. Now the bevel join sort of solved the problem but not quite, we've actually opened up a gap here. So round join is going to be the best option for us. Problem one solved. Problem two solved, where is our text? Well, the appearance panel works as a sort of layer stack. And right now the stroke is on top of the fill. If we move the stroke under the fill, then we're going to see our fill back again. Now, when you're in the appearance panel, these are little triangle icons and they allow you to expand and collapse. So the stroke at the moment is actually two lines and so too is the fill. This is the fill and this also belongs to the fill. So just be clear on that because if you try and drag the stroke underneath the fill and try and drag it between these two here, you can't because that is part of the fill as well. But you can take it underneath the fill and that's where it needs to be. So now we have our stroke and our text. And if we want another stroke, then we can just add another stroke. Now, this is coming in at the very top, which is just going to be a slight embarrassment in a minute, but let's turn it into the color we want and let's increase its size. Again, just clicking in the stroke width area and pressing shift up arrow. Now it's inherited, thankfully, this round join. So everything's solved in terms of the spikiness. There is no spikiness, but this big blue stroke is in front of the fill and it's in front of the thinner red stroke. You see, this is a 90 pixel stroke. This is a 60 pixel stroke. So we're going to need to take this stroke and drag it behind absolutely everything. There is our multi-layer stroke effect. And of course, none of this is set in concrete. If you have a look at this and decide it's not thick enough or it's too thick or whatever, you can come back and change any of these. So there is a double stroke effect in Illustrator. Now, if you want to use this over again in future, why not save it as a graphic style? I'm going to the graphic style panel with my text selected. I'm just going to click on the new graphic style icon and that saves it as a graphic style. So if I come here and type a different word and this time I'm going to use the font Andes. Again, another free font that I will give you the download link for. I think I'm overdue these, I'm overdue holidays. Let's select the text, let's click here on the graphic style and that style is now applied to this text and it's fully editable, it's not linked or anything like that. So you can come back in here and change the stroke width. So for example, with this one, if you wanted a narrower stroke, then you can just wind down this red stroke and make the blue green stroke a lot larger. It's fully editable, but it saves you a lot of time in creating the text effect if you save it as a graphic style.
So if you came here to learn how to create a double stroke effect, then that is it and you're off and on your way. But I have something else up my sleeve and I think you're going to really like it. So if you want to hang around, I'm going to show you a really, really cool effect. So let's just turn off holidays for now and let's go back to this text because what I want to do is I want to add some dashed lines in it. Now we're going to see a slight issue first and it might be an effect that you like. So I'm going to show it to you and then I'm going to show you a different solution. I'm going to add another stroke. Now I want it to be a small dotted line so I'm going to need to change the stroke width to something like about four. Now we're seeing this because it's just underneath the fill and above the red but you may want to move it around so you can see it really clearly because you're going to need to see it as you work on it. Now if I want to push this stroke out further away from the actual text itself I can't increase the stroke weight because that's going to make a thicker line. So what I want to do is to actually move the stroke and we do that by selecting the stroke, making sure of course that our text is selected and the stroke is selected and we choose Effect, Path, Offset Path. Turn Preview on and the default is 10 pixels so you can see that the stroke is now still 4 pixels in weight but it's moved and I'm going to continue to move it. I'm going to move it out here. Now we've got a join problem here again and we've got the same setting so we can do mite around or bevel and again round is going to solve the problem for us. Bevel wouldn't, bevel's going to open up a crack again. So just go and make it whatever you need it to be. Notice at this stage too that one of the problems I have with this effect right now is that the stroke is going around each individual character. That's something you may not like and I've got a solution for that for you in a minute but let's just say that you like this effect just not its placement. So let's click OK. Now let's go and turn this into a dashed line or a dotted line. Go to Stroke and we're going to select Dashed Line. Now your dash is always going to be zero and your gap is going to be something like your weight. So they're going to be within the ballpark of each other. If you use a smaller amount, so if you do a gap of three, then the dots are going to slightly overlap. If you were to do a larger amount like six pixels, then the dots are going to be separated and they're going to be four pixels in height. Only right now they're dashes and the reason they're dashes is because the cap hasn't been selected. So we're going to choose round cap and that makes your dotted line. And so you can see that increasing the gap just makes the dots go further apart, decreasing it and down to say three starts overlapping them and you're losing the look of the dots. So I'm going to push mine out to about six. Now if this happens and you get some double dots on top of each other then click this icon here and that just readjusts them so that they fit. It just adjusts the spacing a little bit. Okay, let's go back to the appearance panel. What we want to do now is to drag this dotted line underneath the red stroke so that it is sort of cut off by the red stroke. We're still seeing these sort of loopy bits. You may or may not like that. It's up to you to decide. If you do like it and want to save it, well, select over it and go and open the graphic styles panel and add it as a graphic style because that will allow you to use it later on. Let's go back to our holiday text. Let's target it and let's reapply this new style. And you can see that it's now got the look of this text here. So let's just turn holiday back off again and let's say that we're not 100% happy with how this stroke's going and we're looking for some other option. Well, the other option I've got for you is actually really quite interesting. So let's select over our text and let's get rid of this stroke. So I'm just going to drag it onto the trash can. What I want to do is build an effect that's a little bit more outside of this shape. So in the layers panel, I'm going to my text layer, make sure that it's selected. I'm going to put the text in a group. So I'm going to choose object and then group. What that allows me to do is to treat this entire piece of text as a separate object and in doing so I can put a dashed line a little bit differently using this option. So with my group selected I'm going to add a stroke and my stroke is going to be my brown colour and it's going to be the same weight as I was using before and I'm going to make it my dashed line. So turning caps on, 0 for the dash, 6 for the gap, 
four pixels for the line weight. Everything's looking just fine now. Now let's go and push it. So with the dashed line selected, we'll choose Effect and then Path and then Offset Path. And I'm going to push it out. Now actually this time I'm going to push it even further. So I actually like the effect that we're going to get in just a minute when it's actually outside everything. Problem here with these joins, again, we know exactly how to solve that. We're just going to go to round and that's going to clear that up. So let's click OK. What's happening here right now with this dashed line or dotted line is that it's behaving exactly as it did before. So we've put everything in a group and we've just ended up with the exact same result. Well, the solution to that is to drag this line underneath the contents. So let me just widen up my appearance panel so you can see where we're grabbing. So we're grabbing here and we're going to move this down underneath contents. And that means that this dotted line now appears outside of everything. So it's outside the effect that was previously created. Now at this stage, I'm thinking that I could probably offset my path a little bit more. So what I want to do is double click on the offset path to reopen it so I can just push it out a little bit further. Let's turn preview on. Let's take it back down to oh, maybe about 68 and click OK. So this time the slightly different effect has been caused by the dotted lines being applied to the group object rather than the text itself. It just has a slightly different look. If you wanted the dotted lines to actually be in over the blue, this is how you would do it. I'm actually going to just change my offset here and just bring it in a little bit. to about here. And what I'm going to do is add another blue stroke. So I'm going to click here on stroke. I'm going to make it the same blue color. I'm going to turn off the dashed bit. So let's just go into here and disable the dashed. I'm going to increase the stroke weight to push it out just past the dots. I'm going to fix the corners and I'm going to move this stroke underneath this one. So this time the dots are actually over the top of a blue stroke and we've sort of got a double blue stroke. There's a blue stroke here and there's also one here in the character area, the contents area. Here's this blue stroke here. Now if we turn this one off, you can see that it was actually blocking these dashed lines going too far. So you probably will want these two strokes. You'll want one here around the text and then the other one around the group. So let's have a look and see how we would save these effects. Because they're a group as well, we're going to need to save two separate graphic styles. Now, first of all, I want to just turn this off because I don't like that so much. So this is what I'm actually going to save. So let's go to the Layers panel. Let's select the text itself. Mistake. Let's select just the text itself. So here's the text. And I'm going to drag the text into the Graphic Styles panel. So there's the text. Now I'm going to the Layers panel. I'm going to select the group. So it's something a little bit different. And now I'm going to drag the group into the Graphic Styles panel. You see the Graphic Styles are very different here. So let's go and see how we would apply it to another piece of text. So let's go back and get our holiday text. So just so that you can see that this is all brand new, I'm just going to Format Holidays, just back to pretty much normal, how it would have been if we just typed it afresh. With it selected, let's go to the Graphic Styles panel. And the first thing we want to do is to apply the text effect. So this is the graphic style we created for the text effect itself. Then we're going to put this in a group with Object Group. And then we're going to click on the style that we created for the group and that just adds the extra effect around the edge. And of course, all of this is editable. So if you want to come in here, select your text. And then if you say, well, this needs to be offset a bit more, then let's click on Offset Path. Let's turn the preview on and let's just increase the offset here to get something a bit more appropriate for the text that we're working with. 
So there are ways of saving these styles so that you can reuse them in future on other text in the same document. And of course, you may also want to save these graphic styles so that you can use them on any document in future. To do that, you're just going to click here on the flyout menu, choose Save Graphic Style Library, and then you're going to save it. And I'm just going to call this Layered Strokes. So these graphic styles are now saved and you can share them with others. You can just send them the graphic style library as well, but it makes sure that they're saved safe away for you so that they're always going to be accessible. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, click the notifications button, and we'll let you know when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.